a lot of people for some reason are afraid to talk about this topic. And uh, one of the reasons why I picked this topic is because of the fact that PHA has been on the front line of fighting clandestine masonry since literally its, its existence. Um, we all know that St. James itself came from a clandestine organization, came over into PHA um, when they were a part of international back in, in, in the East. And um, I'm going to sit here and just go by, by the basics and just keep things as simple as I'm not going to go through any organizations. I'm not going to, it's, it's just, it's just literally the basics so that people understand because believe it or not, probably nine out of 10, uh, out of 10 people don't know and in Masons don't know what clandestine masonry is. They don't know the foundation. They don't know the meanings. They don't know what it comes down to. And being that I came from the other side is a very big thing in my heart. Um, because of the effect of everything that I went through when, when I was on that side. And then when I came over here and it was like seeing the light is a very big topic in my heart. So this is the reason why I'm touching on it. So, um, real quick, I'm going to share the screen and we're going to get to talking about it right now. All right. So real quick, uh, we're going to go through a quick disclaimer. Um, the views and opinions expressed in this video do not necessarily reflect the views and or opinions of the most worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge of New York or any Masonic body in which I hold membership of in. Um, real quick. So when we talk about clandestine masonry, what is clandestine masonry? Well, we know that the dictionary definition is, it is to keep, is something that's, that's kept secret or done secretly, secretly especially illicit. Um, you know, when you go through 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 everything, you know that the dictionary it, it, it tells you specifics as 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 to what it is to, to the world. But we all know that there's illusions and 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 and, mace, and masonry something can always be something else. So uh, Albert Ma Ma Mackey he defined clandestine masonry in the history of Freemasonry as several men that take it upon themselves to establish a lodge or call themselves Freemasons without a Grand Master's authorization. So automatically that right there, it defines what is clandestine masonry. But the problem that we had was that the state Grand Lodges back in the day before we started, PHA started getting recognition, was they would call PHA clandestine and that wasn't true. If you look at uh, the constitution of the Grand Lodge of Delaware, till this day, it states that their Grand the a clandestine mason is a is a person that they don't recognize, and that is far from the truth. Um, you know, if you don't recognize somebody as a mason, or your jurisdiction does not have uh, that 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 recognition, it just means you're not an amity with them. It doesn't mean that they're clandestine. So what happened was that the Prince Hall Conference of Grand Masters they further defined the the, the masonic the the definition. And they pretty much just said that clandestine masonry is a Masonic organization without a regular regularity of origin. So when we talk about regularity of origin, what is regularity of origin? Right? So before we touch on that, let's talk, let's talk about the rules of regularity. This is what makes a Mason or an organization regular. Um, in 1814, the, Grand, the United Grand Lodge of England, the Grand Lodge of Scotland, and the Grand Lodge of Ireland got together and created the International Compact. This is where the rules of regularity come into play. Um, the rules of regularity are, are, are very simple and straight to the point. You have to have regularity of origin, which I'm going to touch on every single point in a few. You have to have regularity of origin. You have to have a belief in a supreme being. Every initiate needs to receive the obligation upon or within a full site of open volume sacred law. That volume of sacred law could be the Quran, the Bible, the Torah, or any book of, of faith. Members of, a, of the Grand Lodge and subordinate lodges consist of only men. The Grand Lodge is sovereign and has self-governing author, authority upon the lodges and his jurisdiction with full and undeniable control access of the craft and symbolic degrees. The three great lights of Freemasonry always must be presented while the Grand Lodge or Suborn Lodges are in labor. 
the conversation of faith and political matters inside of the lodge are strictly prohibited. And lastly, the principles of the ancient landmarks, traditions, and practices of the craft are precisely executed. So now when we talk about definitions, clandestine and irregular, and, and, and the word irregular get mixed up. They get confused sometimes. And, 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 and brothers don't know which is which or how to use the correct terminology when describing a, another organization or another mason or supposed mason. So when you look at clandestine, you have to look at it that is, is an irregularity that cannot be fixed. So for an, an example of this is the rule is the regularity of origin. For irregular, irregular is a, is a broken regularity that can be fixed. So an example of this is sovereignty or the admission of women and atheists. So now let's talk about the regularity of origin. This is the big one. Because a regularity origin is when a Masonic Lodge can trace its lineage to the modern premier Grand Lodge of England, the ancient Grand Lodge of England, the United Grand Lodge of England, the Grand Lodge of Scotland, or the Grand Lodge of Ireland. This is how you know whether a Masonic organization is regular or is not clandestine. Because of this, many, and if not all, are deemed clandestine. So for example, the John G. Jones Grand Lodges that he created, like Hiram Grand Lodge, St. John's Grand Lodge, uh, King Solomon Grand Lodge, Enoch Grand Lodge, St. Andrew's Grand Lodge, Saint, and St. Matthew's Grand Lodge, and so on and so forth. These Grand Lodges are clandestine based on regularity of origin. Their, their, their charter cannot trace back to any of the Grand Lodges that I listed as the originators of, of, of the International Compact. The belief in one in the supreme being, this is considered a an irregularity. Why? Because this can be fixed. Um, in 1880, in 1877, the Grand Orient de France, they removed the requirement of a belief in the supreme being, and this made them irregular. Why? Because if you look at the origin of where they they were chartered from, they were originally chartered from the Grand Lodge of England, so they have the regularity of origin. But what happened was that they started admitting atheists and that created an issue. The, the, the large consistently consoling of, consoling of males. This is another irregularity that can be fixed. If you look at the, the honorable fraternity of ancient Freemasons or the order of women Freemasons, these consist of men and these organizations have regularity of origin, but the problem is, is that they have women. So if these organizations were to expel the women, then they would be fixed. The problem with the, with the regularity of origin is because the charter does not go back, or does not trace back to any of the lodges of England, Scotland, or Ireland that I listed, because it doesn't trace back to them, you cannot fix that, broke, that, 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 that irregularity. So for example, when I came over from the other side, I had to be re-obligated in front of a new charter. Why? Because that's the, regular, that, that's, that's the only way you can fix it. But if you look, when St. James came over from International, St. James was known under a different number. They were known as St. James, but when they came over to PHA, that number changed. Remember, they, the, 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 the starting members of, of, of that came from International, um, they came over and first what happened was that they went through the occasional. They first became regular Masons. Then they got together and formed the Lodge, St. James. Then they were numbered. So because of the fact that the charter changed, that fixed that irregularity, but the Lodge is no longer the same. So that's why it's clandestine. Going back to sovereignty. Sovereignty is a big thing. Um, if you look at the modern free and accepted Masons of the world, the international free and accepted modern Masons, and even the, 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 the National Compact, you know, the National Grand Lodge, PHO, their issue is not only do they not have regularity of origin, which PHO is an argument, but not only do they have regularity of origin, the problem is that the Grand Master reports to somebody else. That's not, and, and when it comes to regular Masonry, that's a big no-no because of the fact that 
looking over the fact that the Grand Master has final say. The Grand Lodge has final say. They do not report to anybody else. If they do report to somebody else, they are not sovereign and that makes them irregular. So for example, PHO, when they first formed, they formed with, with, with good intentions. But what happened was that Grand Lodge started realizing that they didn't have sovereignty, that they reported to somebody else. And that created an issue with Grand Lodge, so they started to leave. And then everything else is a whole other story, but this is the reason why Grand Lodge is left, because they realized they weren't sovereign. Last is the control over craft and symbolic degrees. If you look at the Supreme Council of Louisiana, they were organized in 1839 due to the absence of the Charleston Supreme Council. Now, if you look at the way we're structured, we, the Grand Lodge, has full control over the first three degrees. After that, what happens is you have the appendant bodies, the York Rite and the Scottish Rite, that pick up all the other degrees. But if you notice, they don't do the first three degrees. The Scottish Rite actually has three degrees that's catered to them. And what happened is, when we create, when they, when it was created for PHA and for the Grand Lodge Estates, they made an agreement that we will adopt these bodies, but you cannot do the first three degrees. So the Supreme Council of Louisiana is considered irregular. Why? Because they do the first three degrees in their one to 33. So if they were to get rid of those three degrees, then that would make them from irregular to regular. And this concludes my presentation. Hey, very cool there, Josh. I'm going to unmute everybody real quick. Or guys, you can just unmute yourself in case you have any uh, questions or comments about uh, what Josh presented today. Good job, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, very good, man. Good I, think, I, so it's, I appreciate you actually touching on this because as uh, – as as Masons, right, we, we constantly get run up on the subject of clandestine or regular Masons, or even from the outside, those that uh, are looking for light and might be exploring all of these opportunities, ask us what the differences are. Um, and outside of saying not regular Masons, I think that, that this type of information gives us the real detail that we need uh, to explain um, what the difference is and, and, and why there is a difference. So now, appreciate that, also, brothers. I, I, I need to mention this also. The reason why I also talk about this is a lot of brothers don't know. New York is a hotbed when it comes to clandestine masonry. There are over 236 clandestine Grand Lodges in New York wow. alone. That's crazy. 236 Chicago Grand Lodges. Too. Uh, Chicago is also, yes. So just so you know, New York holds the title of the most clandestine Grand Lodges in the entire United States. Wow. Did not know that. Brothers, yeah, well, now I have one of them I, we don't need. Uh, now, I have a question to ask. I have a question to ask. This is uh, Past Master Kelly again. Uh, okay. I want to ask, um, I understand the structure in reference to um, the inheritance and the craft itself in order to find the lineature of it and understanding that. But on the business side of this, there is a business side of this that um, was established based on the fact that as a regular Mason being under the flagship of uh, PHA over any other group, okay, or any other Grand Lodge uh, jurisdiction and all, um, if you were not a part of the PHA, then you were considered to be not affiliated, and I'll use the word affiliation, with us. So that made us that we were not able to, uh, uh, as they say, um, have any type of... Uh, Masonic intercourse. In, it, in Masonic intercourse. Right. Okay, on a political structure of things. Mm -hmm. And now, based on what you're saying to us, is that... It has been established based on the literature of taking us back to England, where it originated, and um, back to Scotland, where it originated. And of course, what are the, uh, the, the um, I, I'm going to say the, 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 the edicts that are in place in order to make it 
established. For example, we understand that there should not be women in a, in a, a master mason a lodge uh, at any level. Okay, we understand that. We know that there are subordinates which would be the chapters, and of course you have to have a master mason in there as well as a representative in order to have that and all. So again, um, I, I truly understand what you're saying. Now how do we eliminate, how do we eliminate when the knowledge, again, because as they say, the first and all is within your heart, uh, how do you eliminate the conversation, as you say, in reference to a clandestine Mason versus a Mason of our stature? Well, one of the biggest things, and, 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 and the truth is, regardless of how you say it, no matter how you, you put it, it's never an easy conversation. Because Correct. you also got to understand that these men have literally built bonds. They, they built these bonds with their lodge, with their council, wherever they're a part of. And it, the minute they hear that, listen, your organization may be clandestine, it, it, it creates that, that conflict that because, and this is why a lot of brothers don't like having the conversation. Um, truthfully, you can hit them with proof and you'll always get an argument back. Um, only the brothers that really, really have it in their heart will sit there and open up and, and, and try to have the conversation because they want the knowledge. They want to know where does this come from? Why does this happening? Why is this conversation open? You know, at, at some point, if you look at the history of St. James, um, you know, past master Charles Simmons had that conversation with his lodge. He had to have some point found out what happened and what made international not legit for him to sit there and actually dig further? Because this was something that was in his heart, something that he wanted more light in. Um, in today's day and age, it's very hard to have that conversation, you know? Um, personally, Correct. I've had the conversation and I've literally always online going back and forth with people in regards to the situation, the truth hurts. But believe it or not, I've had a conversation, let me give you an example. I had a conversation with a Mason, with a man who, who, who was in California. He was a part of International. And I told him, and he fought me tooth and nail. And I'm talking about like fought me tooth and nail. Didn't want to hear it, didn't care for it. And then next thing you know, six months later, he hits me up on, on an inbox talking about that he went over to PHA because of everything that I said to him. So have the conversation, keep it... Yeah, what I say is always keep it to facts and 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 don't don't focus on the individual, focus on the organization. And that's it. Because uh, most of sure. these men that come from there are good men. They just were guided in the wrong way. Agreed. Yeah, I think uh you know, I think that that's one of the things. I mean, and just even as a rule of conversation with anyone, right? Like there's so much that I think people like to debate. We see it within our own whether that's, you know, the second district chat group or any type of Facebook groups, or Instagram groups we're part of, there's always topics that, that are debatable. But what, what allows it to be a healthy debate is when you treat both sides with respect, right? And that's the first step, right? These guys uh, that might be on the other side or clandestine or whatever we, we refer to them as um, are guided in, in one specific type of light, right? So when we're having this communication, if someone just came at you, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. The likelihood of you paying attention to that is probably very limited because you become very defensive. Uh, but if you have the communication where you do state the facts and then obviously present it in a way that is transparent and communicative, uh, I, I believe like that always, the reciprocation of that information is a lot better. So um, I think, man, I think this, this was huge. Any other questions, guys, bros, questions, comments? Anything? I have a question. And this is uh, something that me and Josh, we, we've kind of talked on previous back channel. And this might be um, something that we might need to talk again, um, <clears throat> but to, to deal with the skeleton in the room. Um, <clears throat> any would say that as far as Prince <clears throat> Hall affiliation goes, that you know we, uh, we, we fall short of that clandestine uh, area for the, the simple fact of how Prince Hall and the 13 other men um, entered into the craft. Um, so what 
um, what would be your say? Because you know, um, there, 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 there's the rumors going around, and we all know well, that until the Grand Lodge says otherwise, we're gonna stick with what we got. But so, I mean, for those brothers who who go in depth, what what do we say? Um, you know, when you're having a conversation, somebody want to hit you up, be like, "Well, you know, y'all were clandestine anyway, too. Y'all started out clandestine." So, what, what, how, what, what we say about that? So, I, I've had that conversation also. Um, so, there's two, there's two factors when it comes to this. There's the the, the mix up with the date, but that doesn't mean anything. What we're talking about is how they were made. That the the, the you know the immortal fifteen were made masons. Um, they were made. See, the, the, the times were different back then. Back then, John Batts had the authority to do that because he was the, the, the provincial grand master of, 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 GLE, of GLI, of Grand Lodge of Ireland. So he had the okay to do so. He, you know, if those that don't know, a provincial grand master overseas is like a district deputy grand master over here or district grand master over here. And so... He had the authority, but what happened was that when they left, they took everything with them, and that includes that char or, or that includes that, that that right. And what happened was that Prince Hall went to the Grand Lodge of England and requested that charter. At that moment is where everything changed, because in a, at that point, when they got a regular charter from the Grand Lodge of England, it created it it, it fixed that irregularity and made them regular masons. So. At that point is when everything changed. This is why, I don't know if you've noticed, a lot of the history that you see online when it comes to these Grand Lodges don't talk about African Lodge number one. They talk about African Lodge 459 because it's at 459 where everything became regular. Did I answer your question? Cool. Thank you, Brother Josh. Cool. Uh, worse, you, you're muted. You're muted. I said you get you getting a few of these things thrown at you. Right here, Yo, go ahead. Yo, I've been yo, listen for the past four or five <laughs> years. This is what I've been studying. So like I have I have literally books and and literally articles. I have I have uh, proceedings of Grand Lodges. I literally have gone in depth with like different organizations. Like I can talk to you about PHO. I can talk to you about international. I can talk to you about modern free, and I can talk to you about their history and the whole nine yards. Okay. You know, I've done I've done history and all this, so it's like when a question comes up that I don't know, that's when you're really gonna get me. Right. Y'all should see him on Facebook posts. I just get my popcorn ready because that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bros. Any any other questions for for brother secretary here? All right, man. Hey, Brother Secretary, appreciate that that light that you brought to us today. Um, obviously, clearly, definitely touches a lot of us in, in uh, you know, mentally understanding a, a lot more about what we do. We're, we're going to try to do, probably try to present some light uh, each time we do these types of meetings, 15 to 20 minutes, something like that, just something to give us a good conversation about and some info. So I do believe our Brother C.D. is up next, right? Correct? Yeah. All right, cool. 